Every year, thousands of RVs like these travel the roads of our nation. The drivers feel, for the most part, prepared to handle any situation the road may present. But there is one situation that many drivers dread. One so steeped in myth and rumor that even some of the most professional drivers believe it can't be handled. That situation is the rapid loss of air in a tire, a blowout. We know the most common cause of a blowout on a motorhome tire is due to overload or underinflation. It is critical, therefore, that you know your loaded corner weights and keep your inflation pressures at the minimum required to carry these loads. Air pressure should be checked prior to each trip and each morning you travel. Here at the Nevada Automotive Testing Center, hundreds of drivers have learned what they should do to maintain control in the event of a blowout. One thing they have learned is that we shouldn't necessarily be using the word blowout, because even though a rapid loss of air in a tire can be noisy, a tire can also go flat and present control problems for the driver due to a long, slow leak. But perhaps the most important thing they've learned is that losing the air in a tire, even rapidly, does not automatically mean losing control. We are not here to offer you a guarantee. What we are going to show you are simple ways of maintaining control over a vehicle by using established physical principles that have proven effective over the years if used quickly and properly. Now obviously we can't illustrate every possible set of circumstances here, but if you listen to what we have to say and use these techniques correctly, they will help you maintain control of your RV in air loss situations. Keep in mind that the principles which govern what happens after a tire goes flat are the same for every type of vehicle, loaded or empty, from an automobile to a full-size tractor trailer. You handle each vehicle according to the same rules. First, let's take a look in slow motion at exactly what happens when a tire loses air quickly, because that's what a blowout really is. When a front tire goes flat in a hurry, the front corner of the vehicle will drop, creating a side force. The strength of this side force depends upon such factors as tire rolling resistance and vehicle dynamics. An important fact is that while the RV will continue to roll along on the deflated tire and wheel, the driver must compensate quickly for this new side force. What do you do to maintain control? The answer is under your right foot. No, not the brake. In fact, panic braking is the worst possible thing you can do. Taking your foot off the accelerator is the second worst. The real solution is stepping on the accelerator. Getting power to the drive wheels means maintaining control. The accelerator is your best answer when there is a force pulling the RV to the side. But wait a minute, you say. I don't want to go faster. I want to stop right now. I'm going for the brake and hard. When you do that, you may lose control of your RV. One of nature's basic laws says that an object going in one direction, such as an RV on a highway, will keep moving in that direction unless it is acted upon by a new force in a different direction. In our diagram, the size of the arrows approximate the magnitude and direction of these forces. A rapid air loss creates a new side force. Unless the driver compensates for this side force, the RV will move in a new direction. By stepping on the accelerator, the driver starts to compensate. He completes the compensation by making a steering correction. If you think about it, you deal with these external side forces all the time when you drive, especially in crosswinds or on some high crown roads. All you do is step on the accelerator and correct with a steering wheel. There is no difference when a tire loses air. As the tire goes flat, a new side force begins acting on the RV. By stepping on the accelerator and correcting with the steering wheel, you maintain control of the RV. Then you can decide when and where to slow down and pull off to the side of the road. In the case of a front tire air loss, the obvious concern is the effect on the driver's ability to steer. When a tire goes flat, the RV wants to turn in the direction of the flat. As the driver steps on the accelerator, the added power applied to the drive wheels allows the driver more time to make the necessary steering correction. Now watch again and notice just how much steering and correction is needed. When we say step on the accelerator, we aren't talking about picking up speed rapidly. After stepping on the accelerator in an emergency, you should be able to diagnose the problem and get the RV stable before you gather up any significant extra speed. One other point about stepping on the accelerator. If you run your RV at its power limit or up against the governor, you leave yourself no extra power to deal with unexpected situations. On the other hand, 
If you step on the brakes in an air loss situation, you lose the forward force that allows you to maintain control. The RV suddenly becomes much more vulnerable to the side force. Without the forward force, you will be much less able to control the vehicle. For the purpose of this program, we're using vehicles loaded to approximate operating weight. We create blowouts in the tire using detonation cord. In slow motion, watch what happens when the tire loses air. It only takes a fraction of a second from the creation of the hole to the settling of the vehicle onto the wheel and the deflated tire. Until that settling occurs, the RV will keep right on going as if nothing had ever happened. When the weight of the RV comes down on the wheel and the deflated tire, the driver begins to feel the effects of the new side force through the steering or the ride. This is when the driver must take action by stepping on the accelerator and steering as necessary to maintain control. Let's compare front and rear tire air loss situations. The important thing to remember here is that you handle both situations in the same way. The key differences lie in the way they feel to the driver and in what effect they have on the behavior of the vehicle. Controlling rear tire air loss situations calls for the same driving technique as a front tire situation, with one important difference. When our rear tire loses air, the driver still has two good steering tires. The answer again is getting power to the drive wheel. The steering correction is necessary to maintain control of the vehicle. Then the driver can choose when and where to slow down and pull off to the side of the road. Again, stepping on the brakes is the worst thing a driver can do. Whether the tire that loses air is on the front or on the rear, you deal with each situation in the same way, by stepping on the accelerator, followed by steering correction as necessary. Never give up on an air loss situation, even if it catches you by surprise. If you react properly, you can still maintain control. And remember, there is no significant increase of speed involved. Once you stabilize the RV, you can keep driving it as long as necessary until it is safe to stop. The rules for controlling an RV in an air loss situation are the same in any weather, on any kind of road, or even in a curve. Step on the accelerator, and steer as necessary. However, these techniques do make demands on the driver, calling for a professional approach to the job. Using seat belts is vitally important as it allows you to maintain stability in the seat. Proper placement of the hands and arms while driving is also important. What you have seen here are deliberate tire blowouts, created in a controlled environment for our cameras. Today, tires are better than ever, and chances are slim that you will ever have to deal with a rapid air loss situation. But if you do, just remember these simple rules. Be sure to go through a pre-trip inspection, including the tires, before you climb aboard. Proper seat position, hand position, use of seat belt and good driving habits will give you a head start towards handling any situation. When you hear, feel, or see something wrong, maintain control of the RV first, and then look for the cause of the problem. If the problem is the front tire, you'll probably feel it through your hands on the steering wheel. A rear tire problem affects the ride, so you're more likely to feel it through the seat. No matter which kind of flat tire you're dealing with, you maintain control in the same way. Step on the accelerator and steer as necessary. As we said at the beginning of this program, tire blowouts have been the subject of myth and rumor too long. You, the driver, are the critical factor. In your accelerator and your steering wheel, you have all the tools you need to handle a blowout. 41 years of testing at the Nevada Automotive Test Center tells us so. The drivers you have just watched have learned to follow these simple rules, and you can handle air loss situations just like they did. Thank you for watching and drive carefully. Michelin, a better way forward.